This is Wicked Roadie, a wicked good podcast about Rhode Island events and life. Hello and welcome. My name's Mary Larson. And I'm Ben DeCastro. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Episode 97. We are ever so steadily moving towards the triple di- digits there. And Crazy, right? Um, I, I mean, I don't know. Is it too late to plan a party or something? <laughs> or It's going to be... It, well, it's going to be weird because it's going to be... I think if, if the calendar is, is correct, it's going to be right around Labor Day weekend. So... You know, it's a great it, weekend to hear about things to do in Rhode Island, to tell you yeah, what. Yeah, yeah. An Absolutely. action-packed so maybe, episode. Maybe we'll have to uh, figure something out there. Maybe we'll do a virtual party, just to check in on Twitter or something. That'll yeah, be yeah. Fun. But <laughs> the, the sure sign of spring, uh, of fall, spring, Whew, I wish. <laughs> the sure sign of fall, though, is uh, the Patriots football actually is back the day that this episode comes out. We mm-hmm. have our first preseason game over there at the old Gillette Stadium. Everybody's excited. There's so much speculation. There's so much drama. So let me ask you, Mary Larson, yes. are you excited for football season? I am excited. I'm really excited because of all of this drama. I know that sounds silly, but I feel like being a Pats fan, uh, we've been very fortunate, especially over the past several years. And this is going to be um, kind of the year of, of the new crop. So I'm pumped to see what the new blood has and if this is indeed Tom Brady's last year. So I'm excited. I, not, yeah. I love Tom Brady, but it, there's just a lot going on this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not convinced. I, I'm not 100% yet that it would be his last year, to be honest. I, I, think mm. he's got, I think he's got another two in the tank. He said he wanted to play until he's 45 years old. Okay. Um, but I don't think he'll make it all the way to 45. He just recently turned 41. They had another huge cake. It was just actually last week. They had a ginormous cake over there. Diabetes for everybody. <laughs> uh, more milk, sugar, and flour than you could uh, shake a stick at. But they had a, a party for him over there at the at the training days. Mm-hmm. Now, have ha- has Blake considered bringing Reese to any of the training days at all? The Larson lad? Not at all. No. Uh, Which is, uh, you uh, know, I mean... I Maurice bet it would still be fun. Young. He is still very young. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a long ride. I mean, I'm such a Rhode Islander. I just live in Cranston, but it'd be a long ride for him. Um, maybe next year. I feel like next year would be a good year. This is his last year of really prepping him and letting him watch the games on the TV. But okay. I think it would be a, a, it would be so sad if they got there and then my son was all set and bored. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the the training camp that is usually like the the best way. So maybe next year it'd be a good day to bring him to the training camp. He'll he'll see everything happening. It's constantly, you know, it's not like it's a game. There's not the intensity. You don't you don't feel bad if you leave after a little bit. You get the restaurants there. It's not as crazy mm-hmm. as it is on game day. You can actually get around and go to uh, the the any of the the fine food establishments there, or go to the the movie theater, or go bowling, or whatever you want to do there over there at the old Patriot place. But yeah, maybe that's something, a a different way to, to approach it. I know a lot of people have gone there. It's been very, very hot out. So it's, you know, you gotta be careful when Mm -hmm. you're doing so many things outside, but regardless, we've got, whether you're going to the, the, the practices, I call them rehearsals. I mean, (laughs) I'm such a musician. musician, Yeah. We're we're going to rehearse football ready. And one and a two and a, uh, no matter what you're doing, if you're rehearsing your football or if uh, perhaps you're uh, out there trying to stay cool in whatever air conditioning you can find in the heat, don't worry. Sit back, tune in uh, and and relax because we've got a whole bunch of great stuff for you. If you hear something that piques your interest, head on over to the website for all the links at wickedroadypodcast.com. So this week, All right. yeah. yeah, what do you have? I've you, got, you got a fun little, really good. little pick. Yeah, if we've, mm. you know, all year long, I talk about the Rhode Island Philharmonic Orchestra, how they're just an extraordinary group of, of musicians. We had all the wonderful things going on. I don't even know if they've picked a conductor yet. I need to double check on that. But now is the season when you get to see them for free because the oh. Pops concerts are outdoors. They're often at free venues. And this is kind of the first one really kicking it off. It's going to be Friday night at 7 o'clock at Roger Williams Park, which means... 
that there's another event that happens Friday nights ba-da, ba-da, in Rye Jones Friday. <laughs> the food trucks. The food truck Friday. So they're going to have 10 or so food trucks at the Temple of Music already for oh, wow. for the concert. Then they're going to have an additional 15 plus at their usual spot on the hill at Carousel Village. So right. the, the food truck Friday starts at 5 p.m., goes until 9.30. So what you can do is you can head on down, say around six, check out all the food trucks since there's going to be about 25 plus of them, which just sounds outrageously amazing. Of course, there's going to be beer and wine available at the Food Truck Friday, so you can have a little something there. And then head on over to the concert right at the Temple of Music. But this is just a great way to get out there, see some music, have some food. You don't even have to pick your own picnic. You don't have to do that. You can just go to the park. That's awesome. I would strongly, strongly, strongly suggest taking an Uber or Lyft over to the park Mm -hmm. from wherever you are because two reasons. One, it will give it give you more time enjoying the events than more time finding to park. And secondly, you can go ahead and eat to your heart's content, have a few drinks and let somebody else do the driving. Amen. It's so much safer. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, totally, totally. And, you know, because... Uh, Sue and I, a few weeks ago, we went over to the Food Truck Fridays over there at uh, at the the Carousel Village there, and you know it's great because they have the they have the whole um, the the playground. They've got the carousel. They've got music. They've got different things for kids to do. So you, you really, it, it's like going out to eat at an amusement park yes. with really great food. So. Check that out. That and so and, and you can have some culture too. You can hear a different hear hear more music on the other side. So what time does that all start? That's gonna be seven to nine PM is the music. The food of course yep. is available as of five. Um, and if it does rain, but it's not supposed to rain, if it does rain, they're gonna be just doing it the next night, Saturday night. But it looks like Friday is gonna be nice and warm, not too awfully hot, and you can get your food and park it and listen to the orchestra. Perfect. I like it. So that is what's wicked interesting. And now here's what's wicked fun in the 401. You know, recently we've had some really awesome opportunities come up for road races, whether you've been running over the Newport Bridge or the... Uh, doing the biking events where they go the bridge to bridge to bridge where you do the the Mount Hope, the Newport, and the Sakana River Bridge or however you want to do it or the Jamestown Bridge. But for the second year now in a row, runners and walkers will have the opportunity to cross over the historic Mount Hope Bridge by foot at the Mount Hope Bridge 5K on Saturday, August 11th. Registration starts, uh, well, actually, the race starts at 7.30, and, you know, race registration is just before that. Uh, but everybody's going to meet up at the University of uh, Roger Williams, mm-hmm. Roger Williams University. Like how I flipped it, it's the University <laughs> of Roger Williams, not at the RWU. You got fancy. I, I, well, I try. They, everybody's going to meet there, and then they're going to shuttle you over to the Portsmouth side. Okay. And from there, you'll run back. Now, it's very important. The... This is a race that the, you are not allowed to have strollers, pets, or baby carriers on this. Smart. And and that's mainly because the bridge is narrow. Mm-hmm. People don't realize how narrow that bridge is. <laughs> Living in the East Bay, and now that they're doing a lot of construction on that bridge, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, that puppy <laughs> is narrow, and you feel it. I you bet. feel it swaying and everything. So if you're not a fan of heights... Maybe you go running on the Blackstone Boulevard, <laughs> uh, you know, the path there. Yes, in Providence, yes. <laughs> but this is going to be a wonderful 5K race. Uh, you, you, it, it's going to be fantastic. Of course, the Bristol Portsmouth police will all be shutting everything down. They'll have, uh, you, you just, you got to be able to get off the bridge in 20 minutes because it's, they're going to, um, they they can only shut it down for twenty minutes because it's one of the three three exits off the, the island. So, uh, and and they can't once you have runners on it, you can't have traffic going as well. Like for Newport, they actually just divert the traffic to mm-hmm. one side mm-hmm. and have the runners on the other side. This is something that's a a pretty pretty uh, pretty significant event 
Yes. And it, they take a lot of safety precautions. So just if, if it's something you've always wanted to do and you're a runner, it's a really cool event to do. Mm-hmm. If, if you're a first timer or, uh, you know, a, an amateur or like me, just, you know, I own running shoes. Um, <laughs> you need to be able to do a 20 minute. What is it? A 20 minute mile? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's yeah. uphill no. half of it. So <laughs> yes. yeah. 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 Absolutely. So you got to do a, four, uh, a 10 minute mile. Yeah. Uh, for half of it. And then you could do a 30 minute mile on the backside. The average just works out. So there you go. anyway, it's the Mount Hope Bridge 5K on Saturday. You're going to want to, you, if you're a runner, check it out. It's a really unique and awesome opportunity. I love what it. else do we have going on? It's a it's a great week for music and local ensembles. The band that I play in, the American band, they're having their concert under the elm. Sadly, I will not be performing at it because I'm going to be out of state. I know it's like my favorite gig all year, but I'm well, going to be out of state. Leave. You're the best of, Rhode I- you're a best of Rhode Island winner. You can't leave the state for no. an entire year. I'm going to Texas, man, because that's where you want to go in August. Because right. <laughs> if it wasn't hot enough here <laughs> make sure you wear the t-shirt that has the state of texas oh. and then it has a little like little blip of rhode island like just in there like in, in yeah. proportional size if you've seen it i wonder so, where that, right. i can get that maybe i can get it like frog and toad or something i don't even have that t-shirt but you're totally right i need to get that t-shirt it's a good shirt to get i guess there's actually a ranch like a cattle ranch as big as rhode island in texas that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> right? So there are cities, there are cities in Texas that are as big as Rhode Island. So you know, it's uh, oh, take man. that for what it's worth. Right. So while I'm in Texas, if you're hankering for some music um, and another kind of great venue that you can bring a picnic to, the John Brown House. That's right on Power Street, uh, that Power Street and Benefit Street intersection in Providence on the College Hill area. Thursday night, six thirty to nine thirty. But to be honest, it's going to be bumped a little early because the sun is starting to set a little sooner we had originally had this concert planned in june but then it got rained out so this is now Mm -hmm. our rain date it's going to be thursday so the day this episode comes out head on down to the john brown house you can see it by yourself bring a family bring friends whomever you'd like um but i would i would i would bring dinner you know once another great opportunity i i always say this is like the rhode island version of tanglewood where you can feel very fancy be entertained by a great wonderful wind ensemble at a fraction of the cost totally totally hey on sunday sunday august 12th if you're looking for something fun to do go on down to newport 10 a.m to 2 p.m it is chasing summer at Fort Adams State Park, it's in conjunction with the Newport YMCA, the Fort Adams Trust, and the CMAK Foundation. It's an affordable family end of summer. What? What? Well, hold on. Time out. <laughs> end of summer. It's here, man. Uh, but the end of summer is technically September. Thank you. <laughs> almost end of summer. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to make some phone calls. An almost end of summer celebration. Uh, but this is this is really great. This is an event that uh, it's a celebration of the YMCA's the Wise Race for Chase Kids Triathlon Program. Uh, every YMCA in the state will be represented at the event. So some people are like, well, I only like to go to the Kent County. Well, I like to go to Bayside where Zach Morris hangs out. There you go. With Screech. No, <laughs> this is everybody is going down there to Newport to Fort Adams. And the Race for Chase program aims to provide kids who are 6 to 12 with a safe, healthy, non-competitive environment to discover the sport of a triathlon. Think about it. The, the first triathlon you do to, as a child, you can have a, a, a bit of fun there. And it's hmm. a it's a six-week goal-oriented summer program where participants are provided expert instruction in swimming, cycling, running, and, and strength training, flexibility, being taught the fundamentals of good nutrition. This is a really great uh, – it's a great organization, the whole, the whole program there. And this – event kind of wraps that whole thing together but this event is open to anybody not just those who were in there and this program was created in memory of me of chase kowalski uh unfortunately chase uh was was one of those uh, precious young ones we lost at the sandy hook tragedy mm-hmm. uh back in 2012 he loved sports of all kinds he was incredibly uh competitive so his family's vision was to turn the the tragedy into triumph by healing and strengthening their families and the communities that's what they're doing with this. They've worked with the YMCA's. This is a wonderful event. Now, it's suggested that it's a $5 donation for a child or $10 for an adult. It's going to max out at $25 for the entire family. So yeah. think about it that way. Four hours of awesome time down at, at Fort Adams in Newport Sunday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. for 25 bucks. It's a no-brainer. It all goes to a great cause. 
and hey, maybe this is a great way to kick off uh, the start of the school year in a healthy way and, and do something different. Right. Plus, you're supporting a, a, a really great cause there. So check that out on Sunday. What else is going on? Saturday from 11 in the morning till 6 at night, it's the Loof East Providence Arts Festival, presented by, of course, the East Providence Arts Council. This is a free event to attend. Uh, the rain date will be on Sunday, but once again, Saturday is looking really good. So this is a wonderful festival. It's happening right in that Riverside section of East Providence. This is the fourth year they're having it. It's an award-winning festival, and this year, it is, um, they're, they're really pushing the theme of whirlwind of art, music, and life. So there's going to be dozens of artists. They're going to be along that beautiful, scenic waterfront area. If you have not yet been to the Loof Carousel. Do I say that correctly? Loof? Sounds good to me. All right. Sounds good. I, that's what I'm like. It's two O's, <laughs> two F's. And I'm like, I hope I'm doing it justice. Lauf. If you haven't been to the Lauf. area, Lauf. Lauf. Yeah. Lauf. Is it Lauf? I don't know. <laughs> but if you if you move those letters around, it spells Olaf. From, well, you're right. Uh, frozen. frozen. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Now, all right. I'll just let that go. So what there's gonna going to be on? people where they're with their paintings, their photography, sculpture, fiber art, jewelry. They're also going to have a writer's row made up of nearly 30 local authors. Ben, you should be there to talk uh-huh. and sell their publications. In addition, um, there's going to be live entertainment throughout the day, food trucks. It is a family friendly event. And I'm telling you, if you have not yet been to this venue, it's stunning. You get to overlook the water, overlook the bay, and it's just a great way to um, really support this gorgeous carousel that we have there and just support local artists. So Saturday from 11 to 6, head on over to East Providence. Continuing in our Wicked Family Friendly segment, the free summer children's performances Continue over there at the Slater Park this week, Tuesday, August 14th at 6 p.m., featuring the amazing music and stylings and storytelling of Bill Harley. He is a Grammy Award winning artist and a Rhode Island Hall of Fame inductee. It's a free. By the way, did I, did I say that correctly? Free? <laughs> one F, one R, two E. Free. Free. Family, fun, <laughs> evening of singing and storytelling. It's right at that key time of 6 p.m. You bring the kids there. You get them all wild and, and fun. They have a great time. Before you put them back in the car, you quick change them in the back seat, put them in their PJs, drive them home. Boom. They're Done. in bed. Life is good. He has some favorite songs that he sings, including Monsters in the Bathroom. Ooh. There are none in my house, I've checked. <laughs> You're in Trouble, a, a phrase I heard often, and Down in the pack, in the Backpack. Mm. So, you know, this, this Bill Harley guy, he, he knows how to entertain. And, you know, these, these, the series has been going on all summer long. Mm-hmm. They've got another one happening next week. As well on the 21st, and we'll bring you that information uh, next week at that time. Um, but this is this has been such a wonderful event. It's of course made it all possible by Pride Hyundai of Seekonk. It, it's just been truly a, a wonderful time. If it rains, they just bring it indoors. That's how awesome. great is that? They so have a little awesome. bit of a they have a little bit of a pavilion there to uh, as an alternate location. But you know we've been talking all about the great uh, the great setup they have over there at Slater Park. If you haven't been in a while. Get over there. It's awesome. It is Tuesday, August 14th, 6 p.m. A free, free, free <laughs> summer children's performance by Bill Harley. Go check it out. So great to hear from Madonna after we haven't heard from her in a few weeks. That's because we've had so many things happening in Rhode Island. We really haven't given a a rip about Massachusetts or Connecticut or the rest (laughs) of the free world. But this week, we're making an exception because there's a good chance you'll hear Madonna at this event at Seekonk Speedway. Mary, have you ever heard of the insane inflatable 5K? No, no, no. Tell me more. If you weren't going to be away this weekend, I'd say... Grab yourself a ticket. You could join my wife and and her friends there. They are doing this on Saturday, August 11th at 8.30 a.m. There's a whole bunch of different times. But this is, it's insane. (laughs) It's a 5K with inflatable obstacles all over the place. Get out. Let me help you here. 
Okay, because if you look this up online, obviously we will have the link for you in in the show notes. But it's going to say inflame, insane inflatable 5K Providence. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like an airport situation. Okay, you don't really land in Providence; you land in Warwick. We're not really doing this insane inflatable 5K in Providence. They're doing it in Seekonk <laughs> because it's the closest space to do it. But it's truly a fun event. It's it's a it's it's a it's a different kind of obstacle course. Now listen, this is not a tough mutter. This is not a Spartan race. They are not going to electrocute you. You will not jump into a a bucket of ice water and you know possibly come out with scabs, <laughs> bruises, and the staph infection. No, this is exactly. If they think about that. All right, Perfect. people, yes. they are gonna go. do. All right, <laughs> this is a wonderful, wonderful, clean, wild fun insane obstacle run you, you listen if you if you want to check it out i would start, strongly suggest you got a day or two to go online make sure you get a ticket find your heat times because they run different heats throughout the morning it's right over there seekonk speedway plenty of parking right on route six uh and it's really it's your chance to be a kid at heart uh and and mildly insane by choice <laughs> now i am not privy to the understanding of, of how this works for kids okay this is not something, though, I think the Larson lad and Larson lass would be into because this is this is a 5K. This yeah, that's is, there long. Are, there will be some costumes there. It will be fun to watch, but I don't think it's one. They're going to see giant, giant bouncy house and they're going to think, oh, I want to go there and it will break their heart. Yes. Uh, but check it out. All the information, obviously, the links through our website, the insane inflatable 5K over there at Seekonk Speedway. Mary, listen, I mean, on this, the day of, of airing, which would be what? What's what's today? The the 8th, the 9th? Whatever Today's day. the 6th. The ninth. Yeah, the so ninth. the 9th, yeah, yep. So, yeah, so the, on this, the day of airing, I think you and I should make a commitment right now uh, here on the air that next year. <laughs> yes. If the insane inflatable Providence is actually in Providence, we'll do Ooh, it. Okay, that's, and then we need to start training. <laughs> So if it's can, in Providence. There you go. That's going to be the stipulation. Yeah, yeah, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> we won't fly until we fly into Providence either. So <laughs> I want that plane landing right there on the highway. Take it down right on the highway. Southwest. <laughs> Folks, as we said at the beginning, everything we talked about today can be found on our website, WickedRoadiePodcast.com. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're posting photos, especially from this insane inflatable 5K, guys, we're going to want to see it. You can use the hashtag Wicked Roadie. It helps other people learn about the podcast. And one of my favorite ways that you can help spread the word is by screenshotting your screen and sharing it in an Instagram story or a Facebook story. It just helps people know, hey, you're on your phone. Guess what else you can do on your phone? You can listen to this podcast. Absolutely. Uh, I will be sure to let my wife know. I think she's going to be over there at the Insane Label. I'll tell her to use the hashtag with the roadie. For more information about advertising or sponsorship, you can just simply email us at wickedroadiepodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, folks, I'm Mary Larson. And I'm Ben DeCastro. And you've been listening to Wicked Roadie. We'll have more for you next Thursday. Absolutely right, we will. You know why? Because you asked for it. (laughs) We got it coming for you.